Today we're turning day into night on flooring. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNazer. I want to give a big shout out to our contest winners, Jason, Marianne, and Nick. These guys all did an amazing job showing our contest last week, which was showing motion in a photo. And we're going to be editing one of those photos today. Before we get started, guys, we have a couple big announcements. Black Friday is this fl Friday. It's this Friday. I invented a day for Black Friday. We're going to be doing some huge sales, so stay in tune for that. We're going to put it up in the banner up in the very up top, and we got a countdown going on. So awesome things happening this Friday. You guys can get limited edition prints from Flurn.com with some of our packages never before offered. So that's pretty cool. Also, we got a new homepage on Flurn, so check that out. We did a redesign. Um, basically, we have ba all the features of Flurn right in the same place. So tell us what you guys think about it. We hope we like it, and uh, we did it to you, <laughs> for you. <laughs> we did it to you. I redesigned your page. <laughs> now, let's show you guys this episode. We're doing some really cool stuff turning day into night. We have this image which uh, is showing motion. I think it's really cool. This is one of those light painting effects, and um, I there are multiple ways to do this sort of thing. I actually don't. I've never done one of these. Um, I think they involve attaching an LED or, you know, sometimes it's like steel wool to a string and kind of spinning it around. But if you guys have ever done something like this, let me know. How did you guys do it? And uh, I think this is a really great picture. Um, one thing I would like is to see it kind of like in a little bit more of a contrasty environment. Something where, well, maybe less contrasty actually. Um, maybe the sky is a little bit darker and we lighten this area up and things like that. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be um, adding quite a bit to this image, turning day into night and um, really making it look great. So let's go ahead and grab an adjustment layer. First, we're going to start off with the sky. I'm going to grab an adjustment layer and we're going to go here to curves. And I'm just going to click and drag this all the way down. There we go. And then we're going to take this. Let's just make that a little bit smaller there as well. We're going to take this point as well and bring it down. This is like the lightest point. So when you have curves, you have your darkest point here. You can make that either lighter or make more, more of your image would be on the darker. You can take your lightest point and make it even lighter, or you can take your lightest point and bring it down. So what we're going to do is bring our lightest point down, and then we're also going to take this area and drag that down a little bit. So that's going to make the sky relatively dark. Now, what we want to do is make sure this doesn't really affect the shadow areas. So I'm going to do a really quick fix for this. We're just going to use a magic wand tool, bring our tolerance up, and I'm just going to click on the sky. Um, using a high tolerance means it's going to click the areas that are relatively similar in light to where you're actually clicking around with your paintbrush. So you can see it selected the sky and then onto the beach a little bit. Now here on our layer mask, um, we're just going to hit command I, which is going to load that into the layer mask. Let's hit uh, command D to deselect and then I'm going to hit command I again. There we go. So now we have a really nice dark sky, which looks great. Um, you can see on the beach it needs some work. So what we're going to do is on our layer mask here, I'm just going to paint black. There we go with our paintbrush and that's just kind of going to make this go away and then we're going to fade this out from there. Maybe fade it a little bit so you can kind of see. There we go. Make it look a little bit more of a natural transition. Okay, so we're off to a good start already. We can see that we've brought the detail down in the sky and it's quite a bit darker. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring up some of the detail here in the rocks. So I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer and we're going to click right here in the middle and kind of drag that up until we can see all that detail in the rocks, which is really nice. Now, I'm going to hit command I on that. And this time we're not really going to use any type of selection tool. I'm really just going to go in there with my brush tool and kind of, you know, paint it in here to see what you know, see what we can get visible and not visible. If you wanted to mask out the rocks, you could do it in the same way. Um, but I'm actually not even choosing to have it visible everywhere the rocks are. There we go. And let's make our, um, our little light ring a little bit brighter as well. There we go. So making the rocks just a little bit lighter. Now, one thing about nighttime and um, what happens with the sky is you lose a lot of contrast in your sky when it's night and you also lose a lot of the color. So I want to kind of get that same effect going on with this image. And at the same time, I'm going to be doing some cool things to color the image. So let's start by coloring this and then we're going to do the sky. I'm going to grab an adjustment layer and we're going to go to hue saturation and just clicking on the central slider. I'm going to pull this towards like the green. Yeah, something like there right in green. I think that looks really cool. Um, and again, I'm only doing this because what I'm going to do is we're going to create something that's a little bit more monochrome. So we're getting like greens and blues in this image. 
And um, I thought that was going to work a little bit better than getting the, um, getting the magentas because the magenta sky wouldn't be as believable. And this is total stylization, guys. You don't have to do what we're going to do here, but um, if you want to, we're going to show you how to do it. Okay, now what we want to do is create an adjustment layer on this because I really, or sorry, create our layer mask on this. We really don't want it to be visible everywhere. So I'm going to just paint this away from areas like my sky. We don't want that changing colors. And we really don't want too much of this going on with the rock. So we're just going to kind of paint it away so it's really just kind of affecting the ground there. Okay, a little bit of the rocks back behind is fine. And we can adjust that color later if we want to. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab another adjustment layer. And we're going to use solid color now. Now, the solid color is really cool because you can pick any color you want and then change your blending mode to make it work. So keep in mind, you can use adjustment layers with blending modes as well. Let's hit OK there. And I'm going to change this blending mode from normal to color. Um, this is not the right color at all, but it's not a big deal. I usually pick a color that's like crazy and out there so we can go back and change that later. There we go. Let's click on here and then now we can see just kind of starting to figure out what color we actually want this to be. Um, and I want to keep it in like a desaturated uh, like blue green area. There we go. Let's hit OK. And you can always change this later. Just double click right there and you can change whatever color you want. So we just took, you know, something that looked really bad made it look a bit better. Now what we're going to do is use a layer mask here and I want to get that green visible. So again, we talked about earlier using, um, making this image more monochromatic, using colors that are relatively close to one another in the color wheel. So we're talking about like if this is going to be the green, we're having the green and then some of the blues, bluish green that's right next to it as well. There we go. So we can see kind of like bringing it to the same color adds a bit of interest. Now, if you want to, you can do some other great things. Um, like let's grab this color here with a brush tool. There we go. And now you can see we're painting with that green color. Well, I can take this blending mode and take, change this from normal down here to color dodge. And then I can kind of paint here on the ground a little bit and it's going to look like light. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with these rocks in the background. Now, the problem with light is that you really only want it affecting where the lighter areas are on your image. You don't want it really showing up where the darker areas are. So to do that, you're going to double click on your image. And some of this requires a little bit of thought. I mean, half of it is like actually doing the technique. And the other half is like knowing what you have to do, right? So if you're like, well, light areas should spread light and they should affect light areas. They shouldn't really get in the shadows. Um, so what you want to do is make it not visible where the shadow areas are. And that's where the splend diff comes in. So here on the underlying layer, later, <laughs> the layer, you can hold Alt or Option and just click and drag this guy from the left to the right. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it not visible in the shadows. It's going to do exactly what we want, um, only making it visible in those highlights. And that's going to give you a much more believable effect than it did before. So let's hit OK, and then you can turn that off and on. And you can see it's just kind of spreading that light a little bit more. And if you wanted to increase that, um, you could do the same thing again. Let's just maybe do it again if I want a little bit more on the rocks. There we go. Double click there. And then maybe this time I won't go as far with my rocks. There we go. So you can see it's a really easy way to get that blended in. And then you just grab a layer mask, pop on a nice big brush, and then fade that away. So it looks like it's hitting those rocks back there when in actuality it, it probably was not hitting those rocks. Um, well, this is looking really cool already. The next thing I want to do, I want to add a little bit of drama to this image. And um, we're going to do that with another curves adjustment layer. So this is basically like dodging and burning now. Um, but when you have this dark, like canvas, it's a really nice opportunity to carve those features out. So what we're going to do is just drag this up quite a bit. That's a cool looking image uh, also, by the way. <laughs> by the way, I'm telling myself, I'm like, oh, actually, I didn't expect it to look that good when I did that, um, which is cool. It gives us a great opportunity. And that happens a lot in Photoshop. You're going to find that like sometimes you're just kind of messing around and you're like, oh, that looks actually better than I thought it would, um, which is great. <laughs> I love those opportunities. So I brought that a bit brighter. I'm going to hit Command I on the layer mask because I still I don't want it to be visible everywhere. Um, maybe I'll wind up making it more visible in some places than in others. But now what I want to do is just kind of paint on my layer mask some of these areas, um, which are going to allow me to kind of carve some things out. Like here, if I want like a, a tidal pool or something like that, like I'll just kind of paint some light areas over there, and it, it'll look like the 
the sun or the moonlight or whatever light is just kind of hitting that base. You can see over there. It just kind of creates some interest in that. Um, and let's do the same thing with this light coming out that way as well. Maybe it's you know coming out and affecting this little rock, which I think I'll be able to lighten up quite a bit. Let's see. If you don't, if you find you don't have any information in something, um, like I'm lightening this rock up and it's still not seeing any light here, um, I'm going to show you guys a cool way to see if you have any information in, in something. And if you do, you can then bring it back. All right. So let's bring all these areas back into lightness. And then, you know, some of them will we'll paint back dark. There we go. And I'm going to even do the sky as well. Um, let's just create like a nice horizon there. And then uh, we'll start playing around here in some of these clouds. And literally, I've just got a soft round brush. And I'm just painting it a really a low flow, you know, something keeping our flow low. Uh, keep about 30% here. And um, as I go over something over and over again, you'll see a little bit more and more detail each time. And uh, this is what my layer mask looks like. It's not clean. It's like totally, you know, these these selections are fuzzy you know it's like it's not keeping any um it's not keeping any difference between the highlights and the shadows it's kind of hard to explain but um you know if i just did like that you can see that looks totally fake and horrible so i'm trying to keep it you know where i'm painting light i'm trying to keep it visible where the you know where the clouds actually are so it doesn't look totally fake and it's going to look a little bit fuzzy and I'm okay with that in this case because it's supposed to be like a long exposure and nighttime and things like that. So um, I think it looks good. Now we talked earlier about um, if you have any detail left in an object, how to get it out. And a great way to do that is to go into your channels. So we're going to go to our channels. I'm going to click on my red channel, green channel, and blue channel. It's just the color channels. Now you can see blue channel is pretty light, especially for a rock. So I'm going to choose my blue channel and see what kind of information I can get out of it. So we'll duplicate the blue channel. I'm gonna hit Command L now, which is gonna bring up our levels. And I really just wanna crank this way over that way. And you can see as I do, most of the image starts to look horrible. Um, but I don't care about most of the image. All I care about is this little detail right there. Okay, so in getting that bit of detail right there, let's just hit OK now. I can turn this into a selection by hitting Command and clicking on the blue copy. That turns a lot of your areas into a selection. Now I'll go back on my layers and I can paint with a new layer. You can see the selection is still there, right? And you're like, well, what are you gonna do with it? Lighten it up, it's already really dark. Um, you can actually just grab a color, like I could grab this green color from, from the uh, orb or a little bit in the blue, and then just paint over it. And it'll look like that highlight is kind of hitting that rock um, where we didn't see any information there. So I'm gonna hit Command H because it's, um, you know, Command H just gets rid of all the little marching ants. I don't want them there. Um, they're kind of blocking what I'm doing. And now I'm just gonna, let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that better. I'm gonna grab this color here and I'm just gonna paint on it right over here on my rock. There we go. And we can see, I'll just mask that out in a little bit, but we can see that did actually add that detail to the rock, which is a very cool way. I mean, even if you have something that's almost completely black, you can go in and add detail like that. And uh, curves are just a great way to select out those um, lights, even when you have almost no information and um, add that back. There we go. And let's just paint black back there as well. So a really cool way just to add that information back and uh, we can lower the opacity a little bit because really you don't want anywhere in your image to have no detail. Um, that just looks like maybe you couldn't nail an exposure or something like that. So this is uh, very cool. I'm just going to lower the opacity of this guy just a little bit because I think it's a little bit too much. Um, but what a cool image. It was cool before and I like it afterwards. So some great ways to show you guys how to turn day into night. Let's just turn that on and off. So completely different image, and uh, you can see we did it with some curves and just some creative ideas, and keeping in mind that uh, light travels where light is. So if you're stretching light across these rocks, you want to make sure to have it not be visible in the shadows. It's going to make it look a lot more real. And then to lower the contrast in your sky, because uh, light uh, during the day you get a lot of contrast, at night you tend to get a lot less contrast. So that's what you want to do in order to uh, get that effect. Well, I think it looks cool. So 
I hope you learned something. You can use this with any of your images, if you, especially if you have a clearly defined sky. Just make that image selection, drag it down, make sure to lower the contrast of that, and you're going to get some awesome images that I can't wait to see. Let's move on to our contest. <laughs> this week's contest, guys, I'm really excited about it. I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be great. Let's see what it is. High key. All right, so high key. This week's contest is high key, meaning I want these images to be bright. The best images are going to be like light on light, and high key is kind of hard to pull off. It's kind of hard to do a really light image that's not overexposed. Um, if you guys check our contest from, or our battle from this past week, we actually had one of our entries was a very high key image, so check that out. Um, but your image is light, so like either white or very close to it. So we don't want a lot of blacks in these, we don't want a lot of darks in these. Those do not qualify as high key, those are low key. Keep these high key and keep these awesome. Get, submit your entries in a comment down below. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see you guys' entries. I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. I want to be a give a great congratulations. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. Find me on Twitter at AKNacer. I want to give a big congratulations to Jerry Mann. <laughs>